Okay, well, welcome to a tutorial on how to create a cube with a hole through it in Creo Parametric. Now, where we're headed to with this is we're not just creating a, a dark grey cube with a hole um, set through it, through the centre of one face. We're actually wanting to create something more, um, which we'll look at later on. But we're starting with this. So, to begin with, um, this is the sort of product we're looking at trying to complete during this lesson. Um, so we might continue on with, with something in just a sec. Yes, now welcome back. Sorry about that little delay. Um, I wanted to show you where we're headed to with this. We're going to look at a cube which has some rounded edges and corners and I think this is it over there. So we'll wait for Creo to bring it up. Mm. Maybe not so much that one. Okay. Perhaps it'll be. Perhaps we'll find it looking a little bit further back. It may be part three. I think that's the one I wanted to show you. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so that's where we're headed. We're headed to this cube over here. I haven't finished colouring yet, but this is a pretty good, cool looking cube, and it has holes through six faces. Well, six faces. The holes go all the way through, and they intersect in the centre, as you can see by looking through the centre part. So we're going to use this as the basis for an assembly later on. We're going to join things into those holes. So at the moment we're just looking at creating the cube. So that's where we're headed to, but the first stage first. We've got to walk before we can run. So let's, let's commence with um, this shape here. So that's what we'll try to get through in this tutorial. Right, now to do that, uh, we're going to need to start a new, create a new part, because we're making a part of an assembly, and it's got to be a solid part. And I'm going to call it... Um, done a few of these, so let's call it cube 6. Oh, I like that capital U, but let's make it a small U. Okay, and we'll get our initial screen. Now your screen may look slightly different to this. It may have just one plane showing. This has three planes representing three different dimensions of a solid object. Um, we're just going to start with one plane. Now if you've only got this plane over here, which I think you may do looking at your screen with a grid pattern, that's fine. We're going to start by using the extrude feature, which is up here on the ribbon. The extrude feature will push a shape or a flat shape through a, uh, an outer perimeter and create a solid shape. A bit like um, toothpaste going through, squeeze through the hole, the round hole of the tube. The extruding toothpaste from that tube. So I hit extrude, extrude function and this little tab opens up over here which is a red tab and it's asking for placement. So it's Creo saying where do you want to do your extrusion on what plane do you want to do it. So I'm going to highlight this top datum plane over here. And straight away um, the sketch menu appears above because now Creo wants to know what sort of shape am I going to extrude. Well I'm going to tell it I'm going to extrude a rectangle. So I click on rectangle up here and the rectangle is a one of different sorts. I'm going to click on, a, click on a corner rectangle. So let's start at the middle of the universe. Oh, and before we start, it's going to be a lot easier if we can see this in two dimensions. So I'm going to go over here to this little sketch view, which orients the sketching plane parallel to the screen. So that means it's going to get rid of all the other planes and just show me the plane that I want to work on, which was that, that uh, horizontal plane. So there it is. Now we're looking at it from on top. I'm going to go to the center, create my square as best as I can, have a guess at it, and with by holding my left mouse button down and dragging outwards, and then when I've done that, I'm happy with it. Let's just say I've got it 100% right, I know that's not a square, but I want to fix it up to show you how. I left click again, it disengages my cursor. Now I want to fix up the dimension, so I go up here to the normal dimension uh, function, click on it, left click, and it gives me my dimensions. So notice how this is 171 millimeters. I don't want 171, I just want 50 because we're going to do a 50 millimeter cube. So I click 50 and then remember to hit enter. So straight away the dimensions are changed and Creo readjusts the size of the shape. Now notice it's changed color. That means that it considers it as one solid surface. Creo thinks that's one solid surface now, there's no little gaps in the lines and it's treating it as a plane, which is what we want. Now to highlight or to change another dimension, I just need to double left click on the dimension and the box appears and I can be as specific as I like and now I've got a 50 millimeter square 
Well, that's good, but we want a cube. So the extrude function is sitting in the background here. So it, it, Creo knows it wants to extrude this, but it's still waiting for it to get the shape that it's got to push the extrusion through. Well, we've got the shape completed. And you're going to find here that whenever you do this, you need to remember, once you've completed a sketch or an extrude or any operation, click OK. Now, OK is up here on the, the, the right-hand side, up the top here where my mouse cursor is. If you make a big mess of it and it's just really ugly and unpleasant, you can always hit Cancel and it will start you back again to whatever early operation you were doing. So they're two really great, fe great features to, to be aware of. Now you can left click and hold, sorry, right click, mouse button, hold it down, get a dialog box popping up, and you can use the OK function over there or the cancel function as, instead of having to go away to the top of the screen. So whichever is your choice. A little word of warning here. If your computer is a bit slow and a bit old, then there could be time gaps between each of these operations. Don't rush it. Just don't push on ahead. Take your time. Let each operation, the computer, churn its way through. Think of it a bit like an old person. You're taking your granddad for a walk. You can't make him sprint because he's 80. You've got to be patient and just walk at his pace. That's the same way here. You'll have success. You'll arrive together if you don't push it too hard. All right. Having said that, we've got our, our, um, our square surface. We're happy with it. We're going to click OK. Now, notice how it's changed color to that dark orange or brown color, and we've got a little button appearing in the middle here. That button's actually a fill handle. Now, to see it in all its glory, we need to change the way we look at this back to the standard orientation, which is a three-dimensional orientation. So if I click on that, using that little button up here, the AB button, and we've got this small little object down in the corner there. It's the cube. Because it's only 50 millimeters, it's, it's sort of scaled down quite small. But well, that'll fix up in a minute, as you'll see. So I'm scrolling my, mouse, my center mouse button to make the shape bigger or smaller. Scrolling the roller button. Now, see up here we've got a little um, dimension. I'm highlighting it. I want to make that. Instead of 21.65, I want it to be 50 because I want a cube. Beautiful. We've got our cube. Now, is that okay? Yeah, it looks like it's okay. It looks like it's a cube. Um, now, this little fill button here, we can pull up and down as we choose, just like you use the push pull tool in Google SketchUp. This is a similar version, but it's attached to a face. Now, I don't know what I've done there. I suspect I've probably changed the dimension, which I have. So instead of 42, I want this to be 50. There it is. There's our 50 millimeter cube. And once again, remember, we have to tell it we're happy with it so we can move on to the next operation. So Creo knows. I'm going to click the little tick button, and it's made the shape a whole lot bigger. Now, let's just suppose it's sitting up the top of the screen there, and I want it in the middle. I can use this button here which refits it, adjusts the zoom level to fully display the object in the screen. Beautiful situation. There it is. There's my 50 millimeter cube. Now the next part of the operation was to make a hole in the center of one of the faces. Well you're going to have to do six holes but I want to make one for you. You can do the others yourself. So this first thing to do is this time let's do it this way. Instead of hitting extrude because we're going to extrude this hole, let's just do it differently. Let's use sketch. We want to we'll draw the hole and um, we're going to use the sketch function to do that, and then we'll extrude afterwards. It can be done in either set, in either way. So we click on sketch here. This dialog box comes up here, and it's saying, well, placement. Well, where do we want to put this sketch? Now, I can type it in here. And the information, or the easiest, is just to hover over the plane that you want to do the sketch in. Now, I want to do it in this front plane, so I'm going to left click. And now the information is filled in down here. I'm ready to sketch. So Creo knows that I want to sketch on this front plane. Beautiful. All right, once again, it's going to be easiest for us if we orientate this front plane to us so we can, we can see it in two dimensions because I want to do a circle. So we'll click on circle up here in the sketch uh, ribbon and we'll start it in the middle. Right, it should snap to the middle pretty well. Draw out with the left mouse button down. And you notice it's in the edit mode, which is that orange color. Left click again to fix it and release the cursor. And I'm going to think, okay, well, dimensions, how big have I drawn this circle? Well, it looks like with this awful color scheme, it's hard to see. But when you hover over it, you can see I've done it the circle 14.75 millimeters. Now, I want a 10 millimeter circle. So I click that, and now it's 10 millimeters. Am I happy with that? Yes, I am. So I can click OK. 
Now I've done the sketch, see it is in the model tree, sketch one. If I wasn't happy I could delete that and go back to no sketches. But I'm happy with that and I want to now extrude that sketch to create my hole. So I'm going to use the extrude feature up here, we've used it before. Left click on it to select it. Now notice how it's extruded. In this case it hasn't extruded quite the way I want. It's got a nose poking out on the left. I wanted it to go through the, 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 uh, the object. So to change that, up here I have Remove Material. So on the left hand side here, I can tell the extrude to, instead of pushing out from the object, I want it to push in and remove material as it goes. So if I left click on that, the extrude function has now changed. So I've still got my fill handle here where I'm pointing to with the cursor. This time I'm going to push it through the object. You can see it digging stuff out all the way to the end. Now you can see here I've pushed it 62.38 millimeters through the object. Now the object's only 50 millimeters wide. What's happened? Ah, it's created a hole all through the other end. Well, this time a bit fussy, and maybe I had another object hacked into here. I didn't want it to go all the way through that object. So I'm going to change this to 50 millimeters. I only want it to go 50 millimeters through. That's fine. There it is. So we've now completed our cube with one cylindrical extruded shape through the middle, a hole. Well, that's the end of this section of this part one. In part two, we'll go through creating the rest of the holes and uh, placing around on all of the edges and then colouring it. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you soon.